try to Welcome to World Business and Technology Show. My name is Farooq Shah Khan. And I'm Aslina Saleh Azhar. Here's the news from Silicon Valley. Have you noticed that your computer is taking too long to start up or launch a new application? Well, there's good news coming out of the latest research and chip development. IBM Corporation and the Georgia Institute of Technology have announced that they have broken the silicon speed record, ironically with a frozen chip. I IBM and Georgia Tech have demonstrated the first silicon-based chip capable of operating at frequencies above 500 gigahertz by cryogenically freezing the circuits to 4.5 kelvins, equivalent to minus 451 degrees Fahrenheit. Today's silicon, today's silicon chips are uh, fastest ones are about 5 gigahertz. In other words, the new chips are going to be 100 times faster than the fastest chips on the market right now. The experiments conducted jointly by IBM and Georgia Tech are part of a project to explore the ultimate speed limits of silicon germanium devices, which are said to operate faster at colder temperatures. Ultra-high frequency silicon germanium circuits have potential applications in commercial communication systems, military electronics, space and remote sensing. The research can make possible a new class of powerful, low-energy chips that will deliver future applications like HDTV and movie-quality video to cell phones, automobiles, and other devices. The chips used in the research are from a prototype fourth-generation silicon germanium technology fabricated by IBM on 200 millimeter wafers. At room temperature, the circuits operated at approximately 350 gigahertz. This is still 100 times faster than your current Pentium computer running at a speed of around 3.5 gigahertz. John Kressler, professor in Georgia Tech School of Electrical and Computer Engineering and a researcher in the Georgia Electronic Design Center at Georgia Tech said, for the first time, Georgia Tech and IBM have demonstrated that speeds of a half a trillion cycles per second can be achieved in a commercial silicon-based technology using large wafers and silicon-compatible low-cost manufacturing techniques. Bernie Meyerson, Vice President and Chief Technologist at IBM Systems and Technology Group, said, this groundbreaking collaborative research by Georgia Tech and IBM redefines the performance limits of silicon-based semiconductors. In addition, Mr. Kressler, the team included, in, in addition to Kressler, the team included Georgia Tech's PhD students, Ram Kumar Krithiwasan, and Yuan Lu, Jian Sun Ri of Korea University, and in Seoul, formerly uh, associated with IBM, and Marwan Khatir, uh, David Al Algren, and Greg Freeman of IBM Microelectronic, East Fish Hill, New York. The accomplishments will be reported in the upcoming issue of journal IEEE Electronic Device Letters. Uh, so, Aslina, a long time, um, Aslina, um, so uh, World Business and Technology Show has been brought, bringing uh, technologies which uh, improve the you know, energy consumption, clean sources of energy, and our long-time listeners know that uh, we have been covering those type of technologies. I believe we have a news item from uh, one of those fields. That's right, Farooq. A well-financed Silicon Valley um, startup, Nanosolar, has been making plans to create a new factory that could finally make solar power affordable. This week, Nanosolar, a startup in Palo Alto, California, announced plans to build a production facility with the capacity to make enough solar cells annually to generate 430 megawatts. This output would represent a substantial portion of the worldwide production of solar energy. According to Nanosolar CEO Martin Roshainsen, the company will be able to produce solar cells much less expensively than is done with existing photovoltaics because its new method allows for the mass production of the devices. In fact, said Mr. Roshaisen, the company's technology will eventually make solar power cost competitive with electricity on the power grid. And then, uh, Nano Solar also announced this week more than $100 million in funding from various sources, including venture firms and government grants, 
The company was founded in 2001 and the first received seed money in 2003 from Google's founders Larry Page and Sergey Brin. Uh, experts say NanoSolar's ambitious plans for such a large factory are surprising. It's an extraordinary number, says Zen, uh, Ken Zwibel, who heads up the thin film research at the National Renewable Energy Lab in Golden, Colorado. Most groups building new solar technologies add maybe 25 or 50 megawatts. Watts. He says, the biggest number are closer to 100 megawatts. So the, bigger, the biggest numbers are closer to 100 megawatts, which is huge number in a new technology. It's doubly unusual. All the photovoltaics in the world produce 1,700 megawatts. Today, the lion's share of solar cells are based on crystalline silicon, which is about three to five times too costly to compare with grid electricity, Zwiebel says. Nanosolar's technology involves a thin film of copper, indium, gallium, and selenium. CIGS that absorbs sunlight and converts it into electricity. The basic technology has been around for decades, but it has proven difficult to produce it reliably and cheaply. Nanosolar has developed a way to make these cells using a printing technology similar to the kind used to print newspapers, rather than expensive vacuum-based methods. Although the company expects to start selling solar cells next year, ramping up to full production will take more time. Meanwhile, high demand for solar cells worldwide will keep prices high, Roshaisen says. Eventually, however, he says the company hopes to attract more customers with lower prices, in several years reaching prices that make solar power electricity competitive with the grid. Zuebel says the company is likely to face challenges in ramping up production. Although their pilot manufacturing facility is a big step, and he adds that nanosolar is not alone in developing inexpensive manufacturing processes for CIGS solar cells. And at least one other company is working with the printing process. Meanwhile, Andrew Gabor, senior engineer at Evergreen Solar, a silicon solar cell developer and manufacturer in Marlboro, Massachusetts, says current supply problems related to conventional solar cells are easing as more production capacity is coming online. This could mean that prices of silicon cells start dropping again, eventually becoming competitive with grid electricity. He suggests that in the future, solar electricity supply will likely to met, be met by a maximum a mix of uh, technologies. So folks, uh, that's from all from the World Business and Technology News Center. Um, stay tuned. Uh, coming up next, marketing. Um, expert uh, Dan Garza is coming to talk with us on, in terms of, uh, you know, um, talking about uh, marketing your um, products. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. <laughs>